Corvair 65. Longer, wider, roomier, sportier than ever. New international styling. Yet the same Corvair scat. Corvair 65 clings to the road like it had claws. Cat quick agility. Rear engine swiftness. Sleek. Steel muscle. Agile. Corvair for 65. An exciting breed of car. At your Chevrolet dealers now. Well, hello guys, and welcome back to whatever this is. Don't let the cricket noise bother you. I mean, middle of a field in Kansas, it, it's going to happen in the fall. I mean, we're not up to the, you know, the levels that Texas or Nova Scotia or Bosnia, I don't know, wherever that cricket plague was recently, we're not there yet, you know. I don't think we will be, but uh, anyway, all that to say... If it makes you fall asleep, at least make sure the video is still rolling so I get the view, okay? But nevertheless, we're going to jump in here and take care of the rear suspension while the engine is out. I really want to get the engine back in, but uh, we got a little bit of work to do. So, let's get into this. So most of you have already seen this before, but we'll just take a quick little before shot here. What we're after on this particular episode is... Uh, shock absorbers. You can see the bushings are completely gone down there. So I got those here. Um, little sway bars clear up front there. All the bushings are shot and cracked. Got two sets of those. Our strut rods going parallel to the drive shafts down there. The ends of each, the bushings in those are completely shot. So I got a set of those. Clark's highly recommends that you purchase um, the bolt kit and replacement center sleeves. So, of course, I did not do that because I know better. So, we'll get into that. And then uh, we have transmission pan gasket. We'll get that in. Um, we'll at least check the gear oil in the gearbox. Maybe paint up a little bit of the stuff prone to rusting, drive shafts, of course, the strut rods. Uh, maybe the springs and all that stuff. We'll see how far we get into it. Um, as long as it's somewhat clean and working is all we can ask for this car. So, let's get into it. So I was just laying under here, considering things. Life, work, what I'm doing, laying under a Corvair. I, I don't know. Um, you know, you don't want to rush into anything. Um, considering the fact that I need to pop the strut rods out, considering the fact that this gearbox was a huge grease ball and the likelihood that the drive shaft seals that I forgot to order were the reason for this being a huge grease ball. And then I pulled the plug out, wondering if it was low. You know, I was looking for an excuse not to have to pull the drive shafts. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of oil in it and it's caramelized for the fall season. <laughs> it smells like 1965, you know, I, I doubt it's ever been changed, but uh, anyway, I need to go uh, order some of those because it will never be more convenient to change them when, uh, than when I have the strut rods out, you know. Which means I gotta get back into the wheels and the hubs and everything else. But nevertheless, onward and upward. Ouch. I went ahead and popped the wheel off. I'll probably just do one side at a time. Might as well. Uh, Threw a jack stand under the control arm. So, um, yeah. Pulled the bolt out the bottom of the shock absorber. Whoop. 
easy turbo. There we go. Does this have any absorber left? Yeah, it actually does. It, now I'm about to take my rear strut rod out. Now the bad news is, as soon as I touch it, uh, my alignment's all out of whack. Now the good news is, my alignment's already all out of whack, right? Because, as you can see, that inner bushing looks like a beer belly hanging out of a t-shirt, right? So, nothing's right, right now. Now, in theory, if my new bushings are correct, or at least close, uh, once I get them in and I get my adjustment exactly where it is, these rear tires are going to be back in line, right? At least we hope so. At least it'll be close. So, I'll take a note, take a picture, whatever I need to do, all of the above. But on my adjustment marks on the outside bolt here, I see my center mark there, and the fourth from the outside line is what's lined up there. And the other side has the same washer, but it's not graduated. It's just a little, just a little tag along, you know, a little kid brother washer. Just follows along, right? So on my handy notepad here, I've made a note fourth from outside and we can pull this strut rod out. So let's do it! Oh, you're dirty. So now I'm going to take out the front strut rod, and all I've done is just snapped a picture of my adjustment bolts on the, the inboard side. Um, they look pretty much dead center in the slots, so that'll be good enough. Um, so I will run those out, and then the outside nut on the other side of this control rod. And that whole assembly should come out of here. I'm on my last trunnion bolt, or whatever you want to call it, for the U-joints. Uh, just comes out like a the butt end of a regular drive shaft. Now what I don't know is 
of course I have my control arm supported by a jack stand. I don't know how I'm going to get the play to remove this other than just like that. Just force it, I guess. Oh, now. Okay. Seriously, bend the puller? Wow. Okay. All right. It's my guess these are original. Um, the number doesn't look like anything that I find online. So, uh, dim dimensionally, they're the, sh they're the same. The national or federal um, number is 47177N. And even that is a little tricky to find. You can see, where did I order these from? I think uh, they came from an individual that was a seller on Amazon. Um, I think they were seven or eight bucks a piece, um, free shipping. From Clark's, they're cheaper, but the shipping will bite you. Well, anywhere else, really. eBay, you'll spend 20 bucks. Um, you may or may not get free shipping, but uh, kind of a harder thing to find just from a supply uh, parts house anymore so then you can see these things are probably from the 90s looking at the box so well I have everything off of the rear suspension on the left hand side that as far as I'm gonna go um, I think I'll kind of clean up uh, with a wire brush and so forth on the rusty stuff get a coat of paint on that um, on the pieces themselves I'll clean up all this stuff all that stuff all this stuff I'm gonna go in right now look up u-joints um, I would like to use these good old US made u-joints but I would really like it if they were serviceable, if they had a grease zerk in it. Um, these don't. So, I'm kind of on the fence. Do I want to put these back in with new grease? Do I want to find new U-joints with zerks? I mean, personally, I'd rather be able to service it. So, I think I'm going to go see what I can find on that, and then I'm going to start cleaning up, and we will reconvene after all that. Hang on. I brought both pieces home with me so I can use them in the, the old Weaver manual press. I don't know. Clark's, Clark's even kind of paints a grim picture of the success of uh, replacing these and the longevity of the, the fix, saying they use the highest quality rubber but it won't last as long as factory, which may or may not be true and may or may not be necessary. Um, I personally don't see what could be very difficult, but uh, I, then again, I haven't done it. So let's give this a shot. Probably just gonna have the so socket stuck in there, <laughs> won't I? Oh well. Okay, got the bushing.
Oh, yeah, it's small enough. It's good. We're good. Okay, now do I want to try cutting that or just pushing it? Really pushing it, kid. Um, problem is, I don't have a great way to grab the edges of this rod. I'm going to mess around, just see if that'll come out with a hammer or something. Well, just beating on it with a punch was moving it a little, but I'm afraid it would take quite a while. So I went out to my work truck, grabbed an inch and three quarter socket so that the rubber should be big enough for the rubber to go into. I'm going to flip it over because that's already started. Well, I think I'm going to have to finish it up with the hammer anyway. I ran out of socket depth. According to the supplied instructions from Clark's, this is going to be one of the hard parts. So I got soap water, and we'll just get everything wet here. Wet and soapy. I've got my freshly laundered strut rod. Inside of that wet too. Get about halfway, and now we're going to put the bushing in. the sleeve, whatever.
So I've got both in on each end. Um, and what I found most helpful, it seems it's very simple until you get to the last uh, three eighths or half an inch. And then the bushing stops wanting to move, the rubber bushing. What I found most helpful, have my large socket underneath so that the rubber can come through and the steel, steel bushing in there. Um, and then take a socket that's smaller than the diameter of the bushing, but bigger than the steel one, and use that to push. Upside down socket on here, and that pulls, that tends to push, obviously, the center of the bushing down first, and then the outsides tend to uh, curve over, and you just do it you know, don't expect to do one push and you get it down. I pushed, I released it, I pushed, I released it, keep dipping it in soap water, and we eventually got it. So, it's more tedious than it is difficult, but it's doable. So, good news there, ready to go back on. Um, so, I made the tough decision to spend what inheritance my kids would have had uh, on universal joints. Good quality US made ones. They aren't cheap anymore. These are Spicer 5 153X's. Uh, part store had them in stock. And they are greasable. So, for what it's worth, there it is. And I liked, I liked it best if the Zerk faced in on the shaft. Well, I think I already went too far. There we go. Well, for some reason, my phone likes to shut the camera off when I get a call, and it wasn't ringing. It doesn't ring the phone, but it shuts the camera off. I, I don't know. I mean, I'd rather go back to a rotary, you know. Get a brownie camera and a rotary phone. Would you guys like to watch this on 8mm? Anyway. All that to say, you missed the very end where I got it well enough to put both clips in. But, uh, yeah, put the grease zerk in, and there we go. I will put the other end in, and back to the car we go. Been throwing Rust Oleum Rust Reformer and uh, black paint on everything as I go. Just because it's convenient right now. Get this outer rubber bushing on control arm. All of this hardware you see that is not painted, I will paint once I get it on. I ran it through my vibrating tumbler. Um, just works great. I personally put just a tiny bit of water and a little bit of Dawn. Oh, I need 
the lock washer off of that. A little bit of Dawn and then let it run, even overnight and uh, with the with the ceramic media in it. And it comes out looking like this. I just dried it off and that's how it is. Okay, I'm going to tighten all this down. You can see my adjustment marks. Uh, this is kind of a serrated washer on the bottom side. You can see where it grabbed the metal. So I'll put that back into adjustment and then tighten these bolts down. Next, as we work our way forward, I'm going to put the axle seal in the gearbox. I did not think to bring sealed driver so just gonna use a socket and that takes away all my light the arms are always the biggest intrusion to helping people see here at least in my case okay Mm-hmm. I better get some better get some slickum for the yoke there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll bend the one of the tabs up. Actually, I'll finish tightening that down. I didn't get it nearly tight enough, but and then we'll grab our drive shaft. So the engineers really probably should have named the lower control arms, well, the only control arms, the hobo arms or the the bum arms, the the drifter arm. I don't know, because they're constantly being the, the the angle of the dangle of the spring forces it down and out. The hobo arm down and. So there is no slide to this drive shaft like a normal drive shaft, obviously. It's just, it's solid. It's the solid connection between the, the gearbox and the suspension here. Um, so the suspension has to move. And as you can see, the angle of the coil spring forces the, the thing down and out. Okay, I knew it'd be lame, but I had to try it anyway. So I've got to force that back in. Hopefully I have enough ratchet length here. I'm getting everything twisted. Okay. Get in there. Okay. Got about an inch to go here. I know I'm probably right in your line of vision, 
but I'm the one doing it. Another click or two. Try one more. If this ratchet's got it. Okay, feels like I'm where I'm supposed to be here, so I'm going to put some keepers up in there. And I'll show you when I'm done. Now I've pre assembled the last piece. Of course, you have to do this to get it in there, but I got my gearbox in bracket on the rear strut rod in. Painted the hardware ahead of time, you know, uh, had I been doing a real restoration, I would have uh, dipped all this hardware in black oxide and done it right, but this project right now, ah. Uh, and then on each side of the, the steel sleeve, the inner, you got to put your washers in there, of course, um, so I've done that there all ready to go so we're going to slide under and try to get the rod back in all right really only need a couple bolts at least to hold it up right now just get some of these started then we can come back later and finish it let's do this one here just to help us hang the hanger up there. There we go. Okay, I've got that end up there. But, maybe a bit of a fight to get the bolt in. So if I remember, we've got this... Well, I've got a piece of... Got a piece of ceramic from my tumbler in there yet. I'll have to get that out, but we got this adjustment, this camber adjustment bolt here. So let's see if I can deal with that. Okay, I've got to reset everything. Okay, I've removed the jack stand from under the control arm. Uh, and it looks like I'll have to go down a ways with the jack here, but we can do that. I'll put my washers in either side of the steel sleeve. And a little bit tighter of a fit here. I think I need a smaller screwdriver. Um, Really, I ought to get that ratchet strap on there again. See if that helps. You go here and keep an eye on that for me. Where, what are you doing? Get out of here. There we go. There we go. Now let's see if we can get her in there. Did that seriously go through? Wow! I just pushed it with my finger. Okay. Odds fish. But I'll take it. Wow! Wow! Alright, way to go, Corvair. Get this back on here, make sure our adjustment's right, and we're good to go. Let's see where we're at. Uh, we need to go back a couple notches here. Um, Right about there, it was the fourth. Get my other three quarter. 
which is way over there. Okay, check this again. Need it on number four. Yeah. So right there. Well, I wanted to throw the shock absorber in there. Uh, they're painted black, and just for fun, I wanted to paint them. Uh, and I don't have anything that I want to use here. You know, they were the kind of grayish, bluish, greenish color originally. Um, kind of matches the body color, actually. Not that I'm going to use that, but uh, I don't know that I have anything better at home. But I may wait and uh, check that out tonight. But, uh, for work here, I was rebuilding pumps in the other shop, had the wash cabinet heated up and going, so I wanted to throw the power glide pan in there. I was kind of blown away when I took it off. There was only a small little section of the sludgy uh, clutch material. So, as far as I can tell, taking this off, that transmission is an excellent excellent condition which is awesome news what a blessing to have an engine that's already been rebuilt and a transmission that shows very little signs of wear so uh, I cleaned the screen out already so I'm gonna jump under there and put this back on uh, you you've all done this so I don't think it's that big a deal um, just got a fell pro there's the number Felpro gasket, throw that back on, and then, like I say, tonight I will, I'll take both new shock absorbers home. I think I keep calling them absorbers, uh, and see if we have anything. Maybe GM Corporate Blue would be, that'd be killer diller. You know, we have an exterminator service that's supposed to come spray for these things, but I haven't seen them for months. The exterminators. Maybe the crickets got them. I don't know. Anyway. I uh, went home. I did find some GM Corporate Blue. Um, it's just in the name of fun. You know, it's somewhat close to what would have been on there. It did a terrible job. Uh... I got to thinking, the last time I sprayed GM Corporate Blue on a six-cylinder engine, at first I thought it was from the 90s, the can of spray paint I have. Uh, my dad rebuilt the 250 for his 63 C10, but then I thought, no, in 05, I went through and rebuilt and refinished an engine for that 54 Chevy pickup that I restored for a guy. So, you know, 18-year-old spray paint, it was coming out in a thick stream more than a spray, but uh, I got them kind of blue, you know. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. I mean, stab this in from the top. Cement mixer, putty putty. 
cement mixer, putty putty. Okay, my bushing on here, and my washer, and the nerd. I've got a lock nut, but we'll get that on later. Well guys, you did a good job and we got half half our drivetrain and rear suspension replaced. Looking good, not so good. So, I guess this is where you can go home, you know, you can leave. I, however, have a whole nother side to tear down and do everything I just did all over again. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with that, get cleaning up. And, uh, yeah, maybe this weekend or something. Would you be quiet? There's a cricket in here somewhere. But, nevertheless, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me, uh, perhaps learning something new with me. Some of you are old hats at this, and uh, you know what you, exactly what you're doing, which I do not. If you see anything that uh, I need to improve on, you... you uh, experienced Corvair guys, let, let a guy know. I am not hurt or offended when I get good constructive advice and it's respectful, you know. If you're just disrespectful, eh, get out of here. Don't even bother me. So, I mean, I love you and I wish you all the best, but don't bother me. So, anyway, all that being said, thank you so much for joining me. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one.